It's a bit boring the workshop today, so I thought I'll mix it up a bit. I'll come over lunch in the car, have a bit of a relax, and uh, watch some YouTube. Why not? So I still need to clean out the inside of my car, big time. Like I realise now it's daylight, and I can see in it. <laughs> it's shizzle. We got like you know all the essentials: look, hot tamales, paintbrushes, um, some air gun pellets, and whatnot. All your essential stuff. Right then lads, back on the gearbox, just got a minute here so I'm going to give it a quick go. Um, yeah, I did have a quick ask on the forum if anyone's got a Mark III fifth gear just to give it a little whirl and just to see how, if it fits, you know, if it needs any modifications. Like for instance if that's a bigger diameter, have you got to grind the case out or what. Um, but, I've got my puller, it's in the shed, I found it. I don't know if it's going to be big enough. Yeah, I don't know about that. I might just. We'll have to see. Um, and. Yeah, if not, we'll have to make some longer straps. Just some bits of metal. I'm going to give you mate a work a quick shout as well, actually, because I need some U bolts to finish off something that I'm doing. I'll let you know what that's all about in a minute. Um, because I've got a nip to town this afternoon to get some new number plates made and a trailer board. So I think you know what I'm talking about now, don't you? Um, I'm going to put up a little build I've done. It's been in the process quite a while. And I've not had time to edit all the videos because there's like 40 hours worth of video on it. Um, but basically I've built a trailer. I've designed and built a trailer. And it all stemmed from wanting a Sankey. So anyway, that'll be a whole other series. I won't get into that because uh, there's a lot of footage already. But basically I've got to go to town this afternoon to pick up some bits to finish that off and get it like roadworthy if you like and I want to put some stiffer shocks on the front of my truck and I was doing a lot of reading up and people in Australia crack the top shock mounts um, obviously it's a big press thing welded up against the side of the chassis and it comes over they crack them out so what I've just measured up for is a reinforcement bit that's gonna get welded up and then bolted in save to any welding on the chassis um, they'll just bolt in behind and hopefully I won't go splitting those so another little project on the go we've got lots and lots of projects on the go <laughs> lots and lots and lots um, but yeah the trailer's not painted yet but that's another thing in itself so I'll tell you all about that this gear here so your first motion gear that has got another little gear underneath it that I don't know if you can see I might be able to move it basically spring loaded anyway um, and all that's listed in the parts thing is, is a friction gear and I had to ask on the Ford Ranger not Ford Ranger, Ford Courier Forum from Australia and they reckon that's um, a scissor gear basically so it's to reduce noise that's all that's about side project the puller weren't long enough so I've made some metal plates to just make it reach a bit further so I'm going to put them on and I can get that bearing off there oh is it coming so it's just got a little bit easier yeah she's coming up Nice. Pick your bits up that you've dropped in the box. So now, I can do what I wanted to do the other day and show you that. Oh, fucking camera's over here, what am I doing? Uh, yeah, so that's your fifth gear drive driver. This is your fifth gear driven. And then there's that C clip, which I'm just going to poke off. Hey, right. Easy does it.
here. They do ping a little bit. So, but remember, that's the bottom one. We'll put the bottom one in the bag because I think they might be different widths depending on where that needs to be shimmed up to. So, we'll keep that there. This. Come on. There we go. There's a ball in there. In that shaft. And that is your fifth gear thrust washer. Okay. Part of one anyway. There we go. Put that up there. Put this in the uh, bag. So we don't lose that ball. That ball basically just stops this from spinning on the shaft. So it's not going to wear against that clip. Fifth gear is going to wear against this rather than this spinning with it. Okay. There's a spacer beneath the uh, fifth driven gear and I'll show you guys reverse now as well. Now we're in here. Yeah, you can see it was fl uh, slipping out of fifth because the teeth are very, very, very worn. So, I won't get into it now because this will just be a little video of showing you the fifth gear, what it looks like. There's obviously going to be a lot more to come. But, that tapered section, that cone section, is your synchro, which is that. So that's a brass or bronze ring. Um, sometimes I make them out of sintered metal. They always used to be brass in the old boxes, but basically, when you go for your gear, that sort of grips it, and the harder you push, obviously because it's tapered, it grips on more to it, and it slows the gear down before you engage it, it uh, synchronises it, synchro. So, anyways, we'll pop that back in there, because there's our big 41 or 46mm nut, I can't remember the size of it, that holds the rest of the gear cluster onto the box. Um, but what I was talking about, all those, I was talking the other day about all these gears floating on this shaft, and the shaft's floating, and it's not until you engage one of these hubs that it starts to drive the shaft. Well, you can see, obviously there's a needle roller in there, so that can just spin away, idle away as it goes. But if you, if I try and get a rag, so you can see a bit better, What I'll do, first of all, I'll show you the side of the teeth that is uh, coasting, if you like. It's the coasting side of the teeth that only gets any pressure when you're decelerating. So that's... Let's get a bit closer here. That's the side that you're decelerating with. It's straight, and then you've got a chamfer coming forward to this point. You can see at the front, like I was saying the other day, they're just a chamfer, just a a tooth. Then you look at this side, oh my god, you can see for starters at the bottom of the root there's a burr created where the material has been smashed off basically and pushed downwards and then if you look at it from this angle you can see the witness from the original straight side and how this is all tapered off and then when it gets to the front it kind of falls away. So that's why when you put it under load they slide off because you think if you've got 200 newton meters or something going through that it's not going to take a lot of angle for that to go whoop and slip away so I think in that case so I think in that case from what I've found here um, I'm going to pull that box off the other black truck that's stuck in third I'm going to have the fifth gear off of it um, and we'll sling a fifth in this one and a transfer case on it and this will be my uh, 
temporary gearbox for next week. I think I'll switch over next week sometime because I've had some good news tonight. I've got another job interview on Friday. So, yeah, it's good, but it means I'm not going to have much time uh, in the evenings and stuff like that. So, hopefully next week we can get this in, in my truck. Now, a bit tight about uh, paying 70 quid, 60 quid for filling the box up with oil if it's just a bit of a, you know, bodge job. So, what I've got, <laughs> I've actually got about 100 litres of hydraulic oil. Um, and obviously tractors run hydraulic oil in the... Uh, in the gearbox because the hydraulic pumps in the gearbox it's all the same oil so I might I might do a little bit of googling and just see if I bang some 46 weight hydraulic oil in there you know might be alright and then if I bang it in there for a couple of days and I know there's no noises and she shifts reasonably well then um, obviously I'll go to Halfords and I'll get some comma stuff on the trade card but I'm not going to go there as it as it is because it's £13 a litre, so with trade card that's about £9. And uh, obviously, you know, you need about six litres, so it does add up. And I'm a tight ass, so. Plus, when I rebuild the other one, that'll need the same, so that's 120 quid, just on oil. Fuck me, eh? I just had a bit of a brainwave, and I remembered I could put the rest of the case out to show you guys this. So, as you can see, the fifth hub has seen some fucking abuse as has the collar I'd assume and the fifth gear um, fifth gear just yeah fifth gear so if that's worn that means that's worn and as you can see this is worn as well so it's like a whole a whole debacle of you know so um We'll pull this out for the time being. We might be able to do a bit of a dodgy here and just flip it over and put that shitty side on reverse. But we'll have to see about that. We'll see on the workshop manual if there's an orientation on this. But yeah, that's that's potentially what we could do. You see where all these teeth are a bit mullered on one side. Yeah, you see that shiny spot, this kind of angling towards my thumb so that's mullered the front of that's mullered and the top of these teeth are mullered so that might be a bit of a go to just flip it over and put the shitty side in reverse because you're never going to give it that much bang bang in reverse there's another one of those keys look like I said they just sit in here like that keeps that collar from going too far and then um, when you slide that collar, it also pushes that synchro ring, I'm guessing. And it's like that. But we'll get into that in more detail. That's obviously, um, yeah, look, you see those three cutouts there. If that's in that, that pushes on that synchro ring. So as you shift, it has to slide the synchro up first and then, yeah. Like I say, I'm not a... A gearbox expert and just a bit of an old boy but I'll try and teach you what I can figure out that's your reverse gear by the way where's this other there's one there there's one there there should be one down here somewhere another one of those um, those don't say we've lost it <laughs> So that's your reverse, and it's not a straight cut reverse either, it's, oh my god, look at reverse! What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, reverse has had some fair, some fair nights out, look at that. That is not good. Interestingly enough, these shifters forks, they look like aluminium, they're not brass. Um, like I say, that's our reverse, and that obviously goes a certain way, so we'll keep all that stack as one stack on there. Um, as with anything really, just get it as you, you know, put it back as you found it. That reverse is rough, man.
that big nut needs to be undone so I need a tube spanner probably six or eight inches long with that in there not too thick either so I'll take some measurements of that now and yeah that's what we're going to have to do and then I'm guessing this plate here retains that back bearing so that should just pop out and then it'll just be a case of pulling it off the shaft because the shafts are all going to be a good fit so you might have to buy a nice free jaw puller and make some longer straps for it, I think. But, yeah, it should be doable. I'm wondering now if I can flip this over. Just put the shit side on reverse for the time being. But, I don't know. If we got it apart, we might as well just switch the whole thing. We've got a spare gearbox, so there's no point dilly-dallying around. We've got a couple of spares. I'm not going to be like, oh, I want to keep that one for a rainy day. Look at that. Just a simple one, that little project that I've done today. Weight plate for the trailer. Get up bright and early tomorrow because I've got an early shift at work and then afterwards I'm going for an interview at Ivor Circle. So we'll see how that goes. I don't think it's going to be much of an interview because the bloke rang me and uh, he's like, when can you come? I said, oh and come Friday after work, I'm on half day, like early day, and um, I was like, yeah, yeah, that's cool, I said, I'll be in my work clothes, ah, that's right, so, we'll see what that's like, but that's uh, for a crankshaft grinder, so that should be pretty interesting, but we're going to see what it's all about. <laughs>